Aloha and welcome to Fighters Club Television. I'm Mark Carano. And I'm Mike Anzuka. And we're on location tonight at the legendary Shobukan Judo Club. And on tonight's show, we're headed to Soldier Fight Night. Sustain, a Japanese-based promotion company, has teamed up with the hardest golden land to find in the Hawaiian Islands, Soldier, to create Soldier Fight Night. This inaugural event has brought the biggest and the baddest mixed martial arts fighters to compete in Hawaii. While there, we had an opportunity to talk to Pride's number one ranked middleweight, Quentin Rampage Jackson, on his pass by Ricardo Ron, as well as his upcoming fight with Pride champion Vanderly Silva. And stay tuned for the Technique of the Week, where we have a very special guest. See if you recognize him. And while we head back to practice, here's some fights to chew on. You're known as the most exciting guy in MMA. You do flying arm bars and stuff like that. Did you feel pressured to give the Hawaii fans an exciting match? And he has had some up and down in his career, especially as of late when he dropped onto this weight class. You know, he's been very successful now. Um, is the, the true Romino Salto back on track as far as his fighting career? Yeah, I I I I I he feels that this is his true weight and he's finally getting used to it, the way he moves and this is where he can really show what he can do. And he, he's been basically the poster boy of, of Shuto, the man that um, they basically built Shuto around, their promotions and everything. Um, how far is he away from getting back to a title shot? やはりあの、ま、シュートという会場で、ま、一番ま、スタープレイヤーとして、ま、周りがま、持ち上げてきたプレイヤーとして、今の自分を見てどのぐらいとま、先にまたタイトルマッチがあると思いますか。うん。2
um, he feels that within two to three years he will have a title match for sure. And um, did, did the fight go exactly as he planned or did he have to make some adjustments? And uh, can we ever, can we, do we expect them to see uh, Romina Sato back in Hawaii again? He wants to come as soon as possible. He loves to serve. <laughs>
this was the this was the time, man. I've been working since Ludwig, keeping my hands up, and this was the time to find out if I was going to be able to do that. And he had me, you know, and really intimidated me when I was coming. I knew work the jab, work the jab, work the jab. And then when he was firing those hard combinations, he started getting in close enough to get me behind the ear. I was like, I was telling myself, you know, you can't take, you can't let, you can't go unanswered. You gotta fire something back. You gotta fire something back. You know? So it was, but I wasn't gonna deter from giving these people. This, you know, Shudo believed in me when a lot of organizations quit believing in me. And uh, Bozo, you know, we're in the best organization right now and they deserve this fight. The Japanese fans, the Hawaiian fans, and anybody that came to see this deserved this fight. People that, you know, this kind of fight didn't belong in the UFC. It belongs right here. This ain't for 130,000 going to a guy who used to wrestle big time pro wrestling. This is two guys right here that said, you know what? Tonight we're gonna give these guys the greatest thing that we can give them, period. And these people deserved it. And I, I'm hurting and I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't change it, I'd do it again. And tell me about this. Not anytime soon, though. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying, I'll do that to you. But I don't you know. And one last thing is that uh, you, you just said it just before the interview. Um, Bozo's known for a puncher, but he whacked some good leg kicks. Tell me about those leg kicks. I, just stunned me. And, and you know, and I, 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 I had a little bit of an injury from uh, March, but I felt strong. I felt ready. And, uh, you know, and it's like, oh, he's not going to kick. So I knew I didn't really have to really rehab that knee as much as I did. Booyah, it hits me. My knee went numb and I hope he couldn't see it. I was like, you know, and so I walked back and if I stood, you know, in between the second and third round, so I was like, I, mean, I can't sit down. And I'm just like, I hope the guy, you know, he doesn't see, he keep tagging that thing, you know, and because I knew, you know, I needed to get that jab, I popping that head up and I had to be, I had to get in close enough to land the left, you know what I mean? I had to get in close enough to land it, but he was, you know, the jab back firing with counter punches already and he had me intimidated. I didn't want to get kicked on that knee and caught off balance. So it was, it's stunned. I mean, he pulled out some tricks, you know, but I tell you this, plumbing with him and getting in that tie-up and stuff with him, he noticed it was me that he shuck to the ground. Well, I <laughs> went sprawling into the corner. I was like, man, I thought he didn't know how to, he wasn't that good in the clinch. He was that bold, you know. Anybody ever, I mean, I, I don't want to be anybody that fights this guy because his power is, I'll tell you what, anybody looking right at you, telling you, you fight this guy, you better bring a gigantic heart and whole lot of plastic in here to fix that up when it's over. I'm not kidding you.
Jonathan Cooper, Fighter Stuff TV, here with the, the newly crowned middleweight champion, Jake Shields. First of all, coming to the fight, you fought Ray before. Yeah. What do you expect as far as changes from his game? His game, well, I expect his game to be about the same, man. He's tough as hell. He's strong. He can strike. He can wrestle. He can go on the ground. I knew he was a hell of a fighter, so I was prepared. I've gotten a lot better. My stand-ups came good. I still preferred it on the ground with him just because now he's a power hitter. But I was ready to fight him anywhere. I went to the ground. I knew, I knew, if, we, I knew if we went to the ground, I'd end up catching him eventually. Plus my stamina, man. I've been... I've been running and running every day doing sprints. I knew I didn't think he'd go three rounds with me, so I was happy to end it early, though, anyways. Did the fight go exactly how you planned it and your strategy, or you had to change plans? No, it did not go exactly as I planned it. I planned going out there, banging with him for a minute. I wanted to hit him a few times hard to get him off his game, take him down. And there I wanted to pass his guard and either mount him, take his back, arm bar him, and tap from there. I didn't want to go on the bottom, but I did. I'm a Jesse fighter, I'm comfortable on the bottom. Even though I don't like to be there, I'm comfortable there. I ended up getting the reversal and getting the choke, so. First round sufficient is what I wanted, so that so I can't complain. I got I got what I wanted overall. A couple times Ray got you in a uh, pretty bad predicament. Were you worried at all, or are you just kind of confident? Obviously, I was worried a little. You're always gonna be worried, but I'm mean, I, I, I go I put myself in kind of position. I'm really good on the ground. I got guys in my mouth. I get guys in my back. So honestly, I was never like worried, worried. Like when he has, like, I, I got I have such good jitsu guys on me all the time. I know I get out pretty much anywhere. It's very rare for me to tap. So. Uh, do you feel that the, the strength or the advantage for you is because you come from such a strong team with a guy with a with a great stable of competitive fighters? Oh yeah, definitely. Having David Trell, Nick Diaz, Joel Melendez, my student I work out with every day. I mean, having those guys right there helps me tremendously. Plus, I have a work ethic. You know, I'm not running every day on my own, lifting, doing everything I can to be the best. So, but the team definitely, without a doubt, helps. And now you got your your um, shoot the world title. What's next for uh, Jake Shields? I really don't know. I gotta see what I'm offered. You know, I just want to fight the best and hopefully make some money and fight whoever's out there. I'll see what comes next. Right, Have a Caesar talk to me. Find some, find some fights. Right, congratulations, congratulations, and I hope to see you back in Hawaii soon. Thank you. Yeah, I'll see you guys soon. Mike Anzuka for Fighters Club TV here with Quinton Rampage Jackson, the number one ranked Pride light heavyweight champ, but contender, um, fought his way to a, um, a title shot. First of all. Quentin, let's go over that fight with Arona. That was an epic fight. And what did you think about Arona's skills on the ground? I, Arona got good skills on the ground. Give me this right here. <laughs> Arona got some good skills on the ground. You know what I'm saying? Now, all the top team guys real good, man. They, they, you know what I'm saying? Black belts, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I'm just a black guy, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm doing my thing. He got some, he got some good jujitsu. And you're the, I guess you're a black belt of um, Slam Fu. Um, did you, did you kept on looking for the slam? He stopped you early. Um, you finally got the slam at the end. Were you worried about that triangle at all? No, I, I don't. I, when I looked for the slam in the beginning, I didn't. I never planned to slam people, you know what I'm saying? But Rona pissed me the f off when he kicked me in the leg all them goddamn times. Then he hit me in the f***ing face. What the f? You know what I'm saying? Mother wanna ban the power bomb, ban that shit. Ban the heel to the face, goddamn it. Because that's why his ass got power bomb. To tell you the truth, because um, my, 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 my friend was teaching me, you know, jiu-jitsu. Well, I know, you know, a little jiu-jitsu, and he, was, he wanted me to get out of jiu-jitsu, you know, the traditional way. Get out, I mean, get out of the triangle traditional way, get in past the guard, get to the side mount. But I was going to do that until he started punching me in my, my, my chin. And he had already hurt my chin with the heel to the face. Mm -hmm. So that's why his ass got slammed. If he wanted, if he wanted to heal me in the face, his ass never would have got slammed. And let's talk about that time that uh, basically he, you were in this guard and it seemed like, I don't know if you were knocked out or what, what no. capacity were you in? Because he basically stopped and was talking to the ref. What happened there? Yeah, I was, I was dazed, but I wasn't knocked out. I looked at the, uh, I looked at the uh, fight. At first, before I saw the fight, you know what I'm saying, I thought I was knocked out. And one of my teammates said that I was saying some shit, like when, doing that part, I was saying something to somebody. And, 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 and I thought I was dazed, you know what I'm saying? Okay. I thought I was knocked out. But then I watched the tape, I wasn't knocked out. I was talking and, and I was... um. And I was still on my knees, you know what I'm saying? I wouldn't when you go when you get knocked out, you go limp. Watch it again. When somebody knock you out, you go limp. I was, but when I was laying on them, I was hurt. I was keeping my head down because <laughs> crashed me in the <laughs> my chin was like this. <laughs> I was like that. <laughs> I was I was you know what I'm saying? I was hurt, man. He <laughs> me up with the, with that heel to the face. Y'all need to ban that. <laughs> <laughs> don't do don't man, don't be healing my <laughs> in the face. You can man, you can break somebody's jaw with that shit. <laughs> and Arona strong on the motherfucker. <laughs> Man, this I saw this coming too. I seen it, I'm like, I made an ugly face. Watch it, watch it slow motion. I go, <laughs> got me on the side of the damn jaw and <laughs> ain't right. So was that blow basically? <laughs> Thanks. Uh, was that blow basically the, the shot to the chin, or was it the the heels to the head that actually kind of got you dazed? No, no, it was a heel to my 
and uh, chin. It, it hurt me. It dazed, you know. I, I was dazed, but I wasn't knocked out. So um, when he did this, shit, I went down. And he started hitting me on top of the head. I ain't shit about this. Shit. This shit hurt at all. Then he, then he, I heard him telling the referee that I was knocked out. And I said, No, I'm not. What the wrong with you? You know, so he hit me in the head about six, seven, eight times. I don't give a fuck. This shit hurt, but the heel hurt. I, if a mother is doing something to me and it don't hurt, I let him do it. I don't give a fuck. the way I am. Well, you know what I'm saying? The kicks hurt. The heel hurt. And, and you know, other stuff, it didn't, it didn't bother me. And, I, and the triangle, I wasn't in any danger. Sometimes, I shouldn't, I, I, should, I probably shouldn't say that, but I'm going to say it anyway. You know, I don't give a fuck. Sometimes I give people on bars and triangle chokes just so I can pass your guard or slam you. I don't give a fuck. If you're going to do it, do it. You know what I'm saying? Because cause, cause if, if you get me, I tap the fuck out. But you know what I'm saying? You better watch out for that mother slam. And don't piss me off. Because when you piss me off, I'm going to try to slam your mother in there. That's just me. That's how I am. And you did what you had to do, basically, to um, get a rematch with Vanderlei. Now you're going to be fresh. Um, how is the fight going to? How is that going to change the fight? Basically, the last time you fought him, you had a war with Lydell. You're kind of, um, you know, definitely not 100%. What's, what are you going to do to Vanderlei now that you have him 100%? This time, I'm going to be 100%. Hopefully, hopefully. Some, you know, sometimes you get up and stuff like that. If God is willing, I'll be 100%. That's all I ask. I just want a fair chance like everybody else. You know what I'm saying? When I fight Vanderlei, I got to fight the damn referees, corner men, and his ass. You know what I'm saying? That's fighting three motherfuckers in one. And, you know what I'm saying? So just, just let me fight one motherfucker, man. Just let me fight one motherfucker. Referee standing up because they want to see a, 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 a stand. What the fuck? I don't give a fuck, man. You know what I'm saying? All the other motherfuckers fight on the ground. The whole motherfucking, the whole motherfucking 10 minutes, they on the motherfucking ground. I'm on the ground. I could have sworn I was throwing knees and punching that shit. I could have sworn I was doing that shit. You know what I'm saying? You know, normally they're trying to hold a black man down. Now he's picking a black I'm confused. <laughs> they confuse the shit out of man. And uh, is it going to be a stand-up war, or are you going to ground and pound them? I ain't, I ain't telling y'all. Y'all just watch this. It'll be Halloween. Some motherfuckers get ugly. <laughs> All right. Congratulations on your win. And can't wait to see you back in your title, title fight. All right. Hey, check the black man out. Rampage, Unchained.com. I got a behind-the-scenes DVD. That motherfucker off the chain. It's stupid. I got volume two coming your way, man. It's stupid the motherfucker, man. Your ass go laugh. And, and if you don't laugh, that means you stupid. <laughs> All right, thanks, Trevor. All right. <laughs> And now it's time for the technique of the week. This episode, we have one of the most hated men in Hawaii mixed martial arts, the man you love to hate, the platinum tooth wonder, Jason Mayhem Miller, showing us two of his favorite moves, the Omo Plata and the Gogo Plata. And while you check out those techniques, Mike and I will get back to proving what's tougher, judo or jujitsu. tricky move to catch people with is the uh, Goga Plata, which is uh, basically a choke with the shin uh, from the Uma Plata position. Um, the key in this is setting it up. I, I, I trained a lot. Um, I worked this a lot in the gym. Uh, it took me a while to get this move. So if, if you know, if you're trying this at home, don't get frustrated if you don't if you don't get it right on, right away. Okay. The first thing is if you get in the closed guard, it's the overhook here. Okay. Wrist control, arm control, as long as you can get this arm so that you can get this foot, the opposite foot in the hip. That's the key. Here, foot in the hip, okay? Now, bring this shin, I mean this uh, uh, leg as high as you can on the back of his neck, okay? That way you keep him kind of down in the hips, right? Now, go over top, try to grab your own, your own leg and use your forearm to push, push his face away. Okay, now once you get all the way to here, you're gonna bring this here, extend it, okay? If the guy's a hard head, he, he's gonna bear into you, okay? Make sure to let this go, okay? And at the same time, extend your, extend your foot. If he's a hard head, you let him come into you a little bit, okay? Keeping, keeping the shin pressure on, okay? Don't push him away so much, just make sure to keep this at a 90 degree angle. Here, reach on top and extend it, okay? Now, 
if you can't get if, if you can't get him to tap this, he'll usually push his face away. Even if he pushes your thigh down and starts to go to pass, that's okay. Just keep the face with the move, push it away, hip out, get your oval plotter. Okay, make sure to hip out and finish the move. Okay? If you can't tap, make, let him let him go to roll. Roll straight over. Okay, give the sweep. Well, that does it for our show tonight. We hope you liked it. If you have any suggestions, comments, or questions, please email us the address listed below. And we'll close tonight with a little interview from Rumble on the Rock promoter JD Penn. And don't forget, you're watching the toughest show on television, Fighters, Fighters Club, Club TV. TV. Fighters Club TV here with JD Penn, promoter of Rumble on the Rock. Um, here we have a, a big fight coming up. Can you tell us um, a little bit about it? Yeah, I got a great event coming up. It's going to be November 20th at the Blazedown Arena in Honolulu, Hawaii. Um, um, on, on the undercard, we have Ross the Boss versus Jake Shields. My bad. Okay. Uh, try this again. Take two, three, two. Mike Gunziger from Fighters Club TV here with the uh, promoter of Rumble on the Rock, JD Penn. Uh, first of all, we have a, you have a big fight coming up. Uh, why don't you tell us about it? Yeah, I got a great fight coming up. It's going to be November 20th at the Blazedown Arena. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to look at him, right? I have the same problem. I look at him a couple of seconds, I just want to laugh. <laughs> Real close. I would say probably in the next two to three days, everything should be finalized. I just got back from Japan. We're working through all the details. It's going to be awesome. The next show is going to be huge. It's going to be bigger than what anybody has even can imagine what's going to be coming up in the upcoming show. BJ's fighting. Um, there's tons of great fighters. I wish I could say 